Back in primary school, I never thought of myself as a math person. I did well in class, sure, but I wasn't entering any math contest. Honestly, I just didn't see the point, so I stopped signing up. Fast forward a few years, and somehow I'm now planning to major in math in university. <coughs> yeah, I know. Kind of unexpected. Things started to shift during IGCSE. I began to actually enjoy math, ended up scoring a 99 in IGCSE mathematics, and when I moved to Canada, I decided to take things a step further and try the Euclid contest. If you've never heard of it, the Euclid is a pretty big deal. It's run by the University of Waterloo and is super well known for students applying to math heavy programs. And you know what? I ended up getting a distinction! <laughs> That means I scored in the top 25% of all contestants around the world this year and the cutoff score is 68. You know what? I got 69! Yippee! Now I'm not claiming this as some insane achievement because there are so many brilliant students out there who prepare months for this exam and absolutely crush it. But here's the thing though, I walked into this with absolutely no experience in math contests and still with these three key steps, I still managed to study effectively and completely for free. So if you're someone who is not completely confident with competitive math exams, especially the Euclid, this video will walk you through the exact resources and strategies that I used all at your own pace. So are you ready now? Let's get into it! To get started, try working through some recent past Euclid papers on your own. The first few questions are usually the most easy ones, but as you go further, the difficulty definitely ramps up. Doing past papers early on gives you a crucial overview of how the exam is structured, what kinds of questions to expect, both short and long answers, and which mathematical topics are commonly covered. It can feel overwhelming at first, I've been there, trust me. When I tried my very first past paper, I was genuinely shocked at how complex and challenging some of the questions were. And yes, they are tough. But that doesn't mean that they're impossible. You can learn how to solve them. But it takes time, patience, and the right strategies. One of the best ways to begin is by reviewing the official solutions. I'm really grateful that the CEMC provides detailed step-by-step -step explanation for every question. Start by carefully reading through them and try rewriting the solutions in your own words to truly understand the logic behind each step. This approach helps you not just understand the question more thoroughly, but develops your mathematical problem-solving skills that are essential for writing these types of contests. But then another problem comes up. What are the solutions even talking about? Oh yeah, I remember that part. It can be frustrating when even the explanations feel so hard to understand. But don't worry, there are always ways to help you get through this. You can use AI chatbots to break things down step by step, ask a teacher or mentor for help, or look for walkthrough videos on YouTube that explain the questions in detail. I won't go too deep into those options in this video, but just know that there are so many other tools that help you make things clearer. Doing past contest papers is already a great standalone method, but if you really want to level up your preparation and give yourself the best shot at ranking among the top contestants, let me show you an additional resource that I find really helpful. This brings me to step two, taking advantage of the CSMC and Euclid contest preparation materials. Just search the key phrase and you'll find a page from the University of Waterloo with a ton of free resources. These cover a wide range of topics wow. that commonly appear on the Euclid. Geometry, algebra, functions, probability, logarithms, you name it. And here's how I use them. I only went through one chapter per week. I'd start by reviewing the core formulas and principles, then I'd walk through the example problems provided. Finally, I'd try solving the practice questions at the end of each section. These questions are great because they cover different approaches of the same topic, helping you getting comfortable with applying your knowledge into different situations. And again, if you get stuck, which is totally normal, Use the same method as with the past papers. Read the explanations, write them down in your own words, and make sure you actually understand the logic behind them. I truly love these preparation materials because they bring you back to the fundamentals and help you build your skills from there. You get to work through in-depth questions that focus on specific topics, making them easier to truly understand and get familiar with. 
And trust me, consistently practicing these questions will take you much further than you ever imagined. Before we move on to the final step, take a few seconds to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and drop a comment down below sharing how these tips have been working out for you so far. Oh, and here's a quick tip for those who enjoyed using colored pens when taking notes. I personally like using different colors of pen to separate my own workings from the written solutions I copy from the answer key. It makes it so much easier to focus on the tougher problems when I come back to review them. Plus, let's be honest, colorful notes are just more aesthetic and motivating. If that's your thing. Alright, our final step will take your problem-solving skills to a whole new level. It's all about diving into the problem-solving and mathematical discovery courseware, also provided by the University of Waterloo. Just search the exact phrase, and you'll be able to access the entire course at completely wow. free of charge. As the name suggests, this course is designed to teach and strengthen your problem-solving skills through a wide range of complex and creative math problems across different topics. It's a fairly long course, I know, but if you stay consistent and committed, you'll be surprised by how much you can accomplish at the end. I started the course in January and finished it at the end of March, which is roughly three months. Now, I won't lie, a lot of the content is challenging for me at first. But once I took the time to watch the explanations and write down my own notes, I started learning so much more. Honestly, my mind was blown away by how magical math can be sometimes. I know that sounds a little weird, but if you give it a try, you might feel the same way. Phew, that was a lot of talking, but I'm so glad that we have gone through these three key steps that helped me to reach my achievement. Now, while the Euclid contest isn't happening until next year, don't forget that the CSMC, the Canadian Senior Mathematics Contest, is coming up in November. If you found this video helpful, save it, share it with your friends, and encourage them to join you on this mathematical journey. Now grab a pen and paper and start smashing the math problems. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!